<laughs> okay, everyone, strap in because the story of aerobics in the 1980s is a wild one. The 1980s was the era of individualism, optimism, and greed. Everyone wanted it all. You need guys that are poor, smart, and hungry, and no feelings. Fashion was unique, inspiration was everywhere, and life was excess, all areas. What did this mean for the 80s fitness industry? It was a gold rush. Gyms were no longer caves for the weightlifting boys of the 70s. The 1980s became the fitness golden era for both men and women, and gyms was where it all happened. So to understand just how crazy aerobics got in the 80s, let's take a moment to understand the inspiring history of aerobic fitness. The wildly popular exercise was invented in 1968 by a medical doctor in the United States Air Force. Avid exercise enthusiast Dr. Kenneth Cooper literally wrote a book on aerobics called Aerobics, and it was continually republished for 20 years. Its robust foundations in medicine gave it much credibility as a quality exercise option. But let's just say, while respect is owed to the inventor, Dr. Kenneth, who truly is an inspirational man, it was a military wife who took aerobics to mainstream America. Introducing the stunning Jackie Sorensen, a dance instructor since 12 years of age. She came across Dr. Cooper's book and combined her knowledge of dance with Dr. Cooper's principles to invent the aerobics that started what has evolved into aerobics today, namely aerobic dance. With foundations in the military medicine, plus an enthusiastic dance teacher leading the charge, the positive energy of aerobics became addictive and viral. From an Air Force base in 1969, Jackie took aerobics to over 1,500 locations in the USA, with 4,000 instructors and 170,000 students in 1981. Her methods are still on YouTube, and she was inducted into the National Fitness Hall of Fame in 2020, alongside titans of fitness Arnold Schwarzenegger, Joseph Pilates, and of course, Dr. Cooper. What an incredible, glowing woman. Wouldn't you love to meet her? Here she is receiving the USA President's Lifetime Achievement Award for fitness, sports, and nutrition in 2020. Still stunning in her 70s. Jackie Sorensen is none other than the originator of aerobic dance. While leading the charge into the 80s, Jackie was soon joined in the industry by Academy Award-winning Hollywood actress Jane Fonda. This is where aerobics got really real. Using her established fame, Jane's first exercise video, Jane Fonda's Workout, was an international hit and the biggest selling VHS tape of its time. And get this, they were released in 2018 on DVD, and you can still buy them on Amazon with hundreds of five-star ratings. That's over four decades of staying power. With the backing of a Hollywood star, aerobic shot to mainstream, and this is where things started to get a little crazy. Are you ready to do the workout? Yeah! Now you need to remember, the world craved the Hollywood aerobic sensation. But people didn't want to be limited to Jane Fonda's workout video at home. So guess what happened? Anyone who could put a few steps together to music was all of a sudden an aerobics instructor. Why? Because the global demand was extreme and the experienced instructors were in short supply. Now, I will disclaim that in the 1980s aerobics gold rush, over eight accreditation associations formed in the period from 1980 to 1989. But it wasn't until late in the decade that accreditation was required for employment. So this is where the chaos begins. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. People were addicted to the endorphin rush of aerobics, and they wanted classes to have extreme intensity. So for the instructor to fill their class, the classes were incorporating more and more extreme high-risk sequences. Knee and ankle injuries were a common problem for people who participated in high-impact aerobics classes. Back injuries were also a common problem for people who participated in aerobics classes. The fast-paced movements and twisting motions put a lot of strain on the back, 
and led to injuries like herniated discs, muscle strains, and sprains. Shoulder injuries were less common in aerobics classes, but they could still occur, especially in classes that involved a lot of arm movements. Overuse injuries, like rotator cuff strains and tears, as well as dislocations and fractures were possible. There were no health or safety checks on classes because the craze was so new. Everyone just wanted to push their body to the limit with no consideration of the damage it could cause. Let us know in the comments your aerobics injuries from the 1980s till now. 1980s aerobics was nothing like the super choreographed classes today that you get from global group fitness production companies like Les Mills. Now we're ready to work those buns. Music is an essential part of group fitness, as it's a great timer for exercise and an awesome upbeat motivator. Now, while we enjoy highly choreographed and remixed music from the likes of Les Mills, in the 1980s, it was a free-for-all of fun pop, rock, and disco. Here are some of the most memorable tracks from the aerobics floor in the 1980s. Physical by Olivia Newton-John. Flashdance by Irene Cara. I'm so excited by the Pointer Sisters. Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go by Wham. Material Girl by Madonna. Jump by Pointer Sisters. White Wedding by Billy Idol. Just Can't Get Enough by Depeche Mode. With demand for aerobics gone wild, some gyms went full nefarious mode, trying every tactic to exploit naive gym goers. With high demand, gym membership salespeople pressured new people with max member limits and four-year contracts with huge calculations. On top of this, people would think classes were included in membership, only to find out that they had to pay for them on top of the membership fee. Thankfully, it's super rare any gym could get away with this today. Call out any gyms you know still causing grief with memberships in the comments below. As we said earlier, the 80s was fashion and excess all areas. However, without the compression activewear we have today, there was no room to hide any body excess in the attire worn in the high-intensity aerobics classes of the 80s. Pressure was high, and the fashion was unforgiving. For the ladies, it was all about the leotards. For high-intensity classes, high-cut legs and low-cut backs was the norm, but also had some long sleeves and high necklines. It looked like some even had shoulder pads. Of course, sweatbands on the wrists and forehead with big hair were mandatory for the fashion conscious. For men, bright colors on top, whether it's a muscle shirt, tank top, or t-shirt and contrasting shorts. To accompany mullet-style haircuts, again, wrist and headbands were there for the sweat and the looks. If only YouTube would allow pics to post in comments. We'd ask you to post any fashionable pics you have from this era. Saving the scandalous for last, with so much pressure and demand on instructors to perform so many classes a week and to provide even more intense classes, there was only so much healthy eating and sleep can offer to help instructors recover. Apart from innovations like the Vibrosan to help recovery, amphetamines were traded in controversy by a small number of aerobics instructors who were at the extreme end of performance. This included Dexedrine, Adderall, and Ritalin which are still used by society today. While classes these days are safer and more tame, stories will still pop up now and then of instructors getting caught using or selling stimulants in gyms. In summary, there was no other era of fitness like 80s aerobics. Super creative, community building with an extreme level of fitness. We hope you enjoyed this video.